Today we're connecting everything, the city to the harbor and the city to the water, because today we are building a urban waterfront. And of course the best way to get started is by pretty much being Dutch again fully, by just bouldering everything in. First of all laying out a little bit of like an idea of like how high the quays or the keys are going to need to be. Also just the alarm of Bridgeport being on fire <laughs> but yeah so the idea for this waterfront is that it was like an old harbor like maybe this was a harbor that was in use 50 years or so ago but since then of course technology has advanced ships have gotten larger so then this harbor fell out of use and so it became more of an urban area because that's the thing with like a lot of old harbors i'm using rotterdam like rotterdam city in the netherlands as an example because rotterdam is like a lot of those like old city harbors like in the heart of the city because rotterdam like right from the get-go was like a harbor city now it is i think the biggest or one of the biggest harbors in the well in the Netherlands, it's definitely the biggest harbor, but in Europe, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest. But it has a lot of those like old harbors that used to be active, but now because like the industry, the ships that it needs and such has changed. And so they, they can't really use those old harbors anymore because they wouldn't be big enough to house those ships. Now, the plans for all of those old city harbors, as they call them, is to turn them into more like urban areas or just give them more of a benefit towards the city and not so much towards industry there's still some harbors that are uh, or old city harbors in rotterdam that have like a slight industrial function but that's steadily becoming less and less and like the biggest project is like turning one of the like few remaining like really I wouldn't even say call them industrial, but it's like one of the few old city harbors that was still had a slight industrial function is now turning into like a they call it the makers district. It's pretty much just like all like creative industry and such. Because that's also a thing that you need to think of when you're thinking of like, oh, old industrial harbors or old city harbors. The ground is going to be polluted because there's going to be industry or at least there used to be industry there which is going to have a polluting effect on the ground so for like quite some time you don't really actually want to live there it you or you need to like clean it up completely which is quite expensive to clean up all of like the industrial pollution that's in the ground but yeah so when it came to this harbor or this waterfront i get can guess that like oh yeah they have cleaned it up and it has become just like more of just like oh yeah this is a new re like high tier residential area because a lot of the times those like waterfronts are a little bit more like for the wealth t sort so when it comes to bridgeport this would probably be where like you know the execs of like the harbor or such work I still haven't destroyed the old industrial area because I think I would cripple Bridgeport by doing that because there's still so much industrial demand. I really need to build some more farms, although the annoyance that I have with farms is that like the, what is it called, the fertile area for farms is just really weird to me because for me, fertile area is just like anything that has like water access and such but in city skylines it's just like yeah it's like these weird blobs on the map sometimes they don't make any sense and so like one of the fertile blobs on bridgeport is actually where the harbor is like the industrial harbor it used to be one of those like fertile blobs now you definitely don't want to farm there anymore because it's not full on industry so you don't want any crops from there unless you want to have second hand. Well, actually, it probably wouldn't be that bad. You would maybe get sick. You wouldn't. It's not radioactive because uh, I should stop talking there. <laughs> but anyways, so 
when it comes to like farms, I constantly have to use like the animal farms, but those just spawn all of those sheds in just randomly across the field. And it makes no sense and it annoys the hell out of me. Anyways, so I decided to expand it actually a little bit further towards the industrial harbor, really just to make everything connected. Because you don't really have harbors that are just on their own. There's usually some connection to like a city or something. Unless you have like a really industrial harbor, like a big industrial harbor, which I don't think Bridgeport by this point would have. So there is actually like, oh yeah, you can connect these. So I did. And of course, closer to the industrial harbor, that's where I would place the more low welt. <laughs> if that's the best way. No, that's not the way that you say it. But like the closer to like the industrial harbor, that's where the more low rent, like the cheaper residences are. Which actually works out really well because it looks really great with those like just towers. Like these it's just low rent towers that City Skylines does give you. I'm still annoyed with like oh yeah the farmland but i mean um uh. now the biggest problem that i had with this harbor or this like i continuously call it a harbor it's not really a harbor anymore it just it's kind of reminiscent of a harbor because it has those like inlets along the keys which thanks kane for saying or mentioning like oh yeah you're supposed to pronounce it like keys not quays <laughs> So, if I ever mispronounce something, please tell me, because I'm a dumbass. But anyways, when it comes to this waterfront, this urban waterfront, because I need to, like, make sure that, like, oh yeah, it's not a harbor anymore, it is actually a residential area. But the key thing, like, the most important thing, but also the most difficult thing, was actually connecting the big street up to Bridgeport because it is in this really weird area where it's basically going down a cliff yeah it's really annoying to like really actually properly connect because it was basically you had the big street connecting from like the center of bridgeport or what's now the center of bridgeport and then you had the road coming from what did i call it water view like the extension that we built in the second episode and it still had to like the main road had to be prominent like that one had to take precedence over the road connecting to the expansion or water view i it really i think when i called or named all of like the areas like the districts i had like waterfront i think the main city or the main center of bridgeport is called port haven or something <laughs> i i really don't know what got into me when I was naming them. So hey, maybe you guys could give me some names for like the center of Bridgeport and then the actual extension, which now is called Water View. Ocean View would probably have been a better one, but I I actually don't know if it's Water View or Ocean View. Like sometimes I have this where I start thinking about something and then I'm just like did I actually call it that or did I call it that? Or did I, you know, I just go insane. But yeah, eventually I kind of settled on like, all right, it needs to, of course, connect with a roundabout. That's just the thing. I, I need roundabouts, especially when, when it's like something like this, where there's the main road that is going to the industrial harbor. So going to where most people would work. And then there's the side road coming to like a residential area. So I needed to have a roundabout just so, so that traffic kept flowing. Now I didn't really succeed with that because it's still like this is one of like the blockage or blockades in Bridgeport when it comes to traffic. Like at the end of the day, in the beginning of the day, where people go to work or come from work. This is the place where it all just gets locked down and nobody's moving anymore. I also realized that, oh yeah, waterfront or waterfront. Yeah, actually waterfront. <laughs> I'm now so confused with like water view, the 
extension or like the second episode is probably the best way to call it but i'm now so confused by that and the actual waterfront that we're building today but i realized that this also needed to be the connection to like the big island so i realized oh i need a bigger bridge but then i also realized uh, the bridges in city skylines 2 right now are really ugly <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, it's, you know, they're probably going to release more bridges and when modders get in and such, we're going to have beautiful bridges. But right now, and you will also see this at the end of the video, because just like last video, we're ending this video by changing a little bit of the highway. The bridges right now are just annoying because they're either just like, if you want functional bridges, they just never look good. So when it came to the waterfront, I wanted that industrial looking bridge like with the like iron and such. I didn't want this concrete menace that the standard bridge is. However, because this is supposed to be like the main connection or for so far is going to be the main connection to like the main island as soon as we get to it or main island, the big island. I needed to have like a bigger road here as well. But then we get the Concrete Menace, which is a bridge that I just don't want to use. Because it just looks ugly. <laughs> yeah, with bridges, you can uh, ugly shame them. Because it's just, I don't want the Concrete Menace. But anyways, when it comes to waterfront, I did want to make it so that like, oh, it's a waterfront. So of course the keys are going to be a little bit lower also because it's an older harbor. So they are not going to be like at water level. They are going to be a little bit higher than that, but lower still than the industrial harbor, because that to me at least makes sense of like, oh yeah, it was a harbor. So it's not going to be at like water level, even though for like an urban waterfront, that would actually be nice to have them like at water level, because then you can really built on that interaction between land and water which you can't really do here but again because we're going for that vibe of like oh old harbor the keys needed to be a little bit higher but anyways back to the other thing which is i wanted to have this vibe of like oh they kind of closed it off but they wanted to keep it a little bit natural so in some parts with the bridges specifically the ones on the outside i wanted this natural vibe going on so instead of having the keys i had a natural slope and turned it a little bit more into like a park area now in real life this would probably be with la made like with rocks or like some kind of like pebbles but like larger pebbles but i don't know what it's called grit i don't know in english how it's called but it probably wouldn't be made out of dirt because that would just get washed away by the tide but again sadly we don't have that in city skylash right now i'm really like i already installed the tree mod just because i can't wait a year for the trees to grow which yes is actually realistic because oh i'm not saying like oh having the mod is realistic but like waiting for the trees to grow is realistic but you know it, the city just looks better with full-grown trees and when it comes to like city planning and such you have to realize as well of like oh everything that i'm planning right now when it comes to like foliage and trees and such especially trees it's going to take a few years before it actually looks like how you have planned it because when you're planning things you're thinking of like Oh yeah, how is this area going to look with full-grown trees? Which you won't have for a long time, because trees take a long time to grow. I also kind of screwed around with the roads. Because usually when it comes to like these old harbors or these waterfronts, you would want the road or the keys close to the water to be actually more pedestrian areas. However, it just it doesn't really look right and also it blocks a lot of the actual like reachability of a lot of places 
So I just did decide to like, all right, it's going to just be a normal road, but that's pretty much it. But yeah, regularly you would actually want them to be like more pedestrian areas, but I think it would like block a lot of like the waterfront where it comes to cars and such. Maybe when we get more like public transport, I can turn most of the keys into like pedestrian areas. But right now I can't because Bridgeport just for me isn't large enough really to have like a really big public transport area or focus. Like by the end of this episode, it would maybe have like a bus line going to like the waterfront, the center and then the industrial area. But I like it more to like do that all in like one big swing. When it comes to like the waterfront and the industrial area, I all like to do that just in one big swing, have one episode fully dedicated to it. And I also just like building up these areas and then later on having to think like, oh, how am I going to do public transport? Because a lot of times in real life, that's also how it goes. You have these like larger residential areas or urban areas that then you need to think about like, oh, now it's like, we need to take a public transport because the roads are going to just get swamped and bogged down with cars otherwise. Which, yes, is a little bit of a weird thing for me to say as a Dutch person because like Dutch public transport, even though like if you ask any Dutch person, our public transport sucks. But then if you ask anyone else from outside of the Netherlands, it's just like, yeah, the Dutch public transport is like amazing compared to what we have. Or I think it's more like European public transport, not so much Dutch. Dutch, are like we are more known for bicycles, which I'm really sad that we don't have bicycle paths in city skylines. Please get to that paradox. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, when it comes to just like Bridgeport in its entirety, when it comes to like public transport as such, as I said, I want to do that in like one full swoop. But I mainly just now want to also focus on just building the key things i would say like the next episode is probably going to be building like little villages surrounding bridgeport because i really just like the idea of seeing the buses go through like the rural landscape going from the villages to bridgeport and to the harbor and such but again that's going to be like a full episode on its own anyways back to the actual waterfront so that is actually also just like waterview where the second episode expansion it is a mixed zoning area where you have residential areas, you have commercial areas. You also, again, have a little bit of office areas because those things, at least here in the Netherlands, they mix just constantly. You usually don't want like an exclusive residential area for like a huge area. You kind of want that to mix it because we actually kind of like, you know, having those like mom and pop shops i think you call them but it's just like you know there's small shops on like corner shops and such small like family-owned grocery stores or like a local bar or a local bakery like a lot of those like small things are just really refreshing to see in just like urban landscape or at least we like to see that and also just brings more life to residential areas because otherwise you have the thing of like Oh, when everybody's at work, there's nobody around here because then you create just like a work area and a sleep area. And when it comes to like, oh, you want to mix those functions, have commercial areas, mix them in with a little bit of office areas. Then you have areas that are constantly alive, that there's constantly people walking around, going to like, if they work in the office, there's going to get a snack from like the nearby bakery or like, you have those like, they're not really grocery stores, but they, it's also not really a sandwich place. It's kind of in the middle where, yes, they would sell sandwiches and such, but they also sell like some like really basic groceries and such. There's probably a word for that. I'm thinking like 7-Eleven in a way, but that's, it's not really like that. It usually has like a little bit more of like a homely vibe or a cozy vibe. But yeah, that. Also, again, spamming trees, because I like spamming trees. I 
when it comes to Bridgeport so far, the thing that has really made Bridgeport for me is just all of the trees. Again, I really love that tree mod. <laughs> because otherwise, I would have gone insane. But also having some parks around so that if you like, you work in an office in the waterfront, you can get a sandwich and then go and eat your sandwich in the local park. Also, we got the achievement or milestone for Boomtown at the end. And then we're just letting the water seep back in because we're not going full Dutch here. We are eventually going to let the water return. Maybe. Maybe everything is eventually just going to be bouldered in. But anyways, now we're working on the highway bridge. Which again, when it comes to bridges, the standard bridge that you get, I'm just going to call the Concrete Menace because it just doesn't look right. It just, it feels like it wouldn't be able to support itself. However, the nice looking bridge with like the iron or the metal work underneath it isn't counted as like one way. So that's really annoying because it's like, oh yeah, finally a good looking bridge. Yeah, it doesn't actually work because it's like one bridge is two ways. So you need to have like, if you want to have like, the one way bridge for two lanes, you need to have two bridges. I don't know if I'm explaining it here correctly, but basically, nice looking bridge. One bridge is too lit, is two way. However, with the highway, I want one bridge to be two lanes, but one way. I think that was the correct way to describe it. But yeah, the concrete menace just doesn't look like it would actually support itself. It really looks like it would collapse at any second. And I'm not like a traffic engineer or any kind of engineer of that kind, but it's just, it doesn't look correct. It just looks like it would collapse with like the slightest breeze. So I did actually try to put the uh, fake bridge underneath it. Didn't work sadly. But anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the urban waterfront that we've built. And if you liked it, throw a concrete menace at the like button. And if you want to see more, throw an actual good looking bridge at the subscribe button. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye bye.